What is this madness at the mountains of madness? Someone please stop all of this madness. Ah, uh, yes, friends, it's your man Z from Our Reviews Will Kill You, and I am here to talk to you about something truly special to me, which would be At the Mountains of Madness, a uh, short novella written by H.P. Lovecraft. You may know him from such things as the Cthulhu Mythos and from things like Stephen King and all sorts of other crazy stuff. One of the, tr one of the more truly horror, um, inspirational, well, inspirational in the sense that he inspired a lot of other writers and a lot of a lot of other like things, uh, Hellboy, all sorts of stuff that you've seen. Obviously, the director Guillermo del Toro was inspired by H.P. Lovecraft and his Cthulhu Mythos and some of the other things that he's done. And a pet project that he's always wanted to do was At the Mountains of Madness. Now, the author is from the 19th century and there's a lot of baggage there, but I still truly believe that his writings are fantastic. I've read every single book that he ever did or novella and short story. I have all the collections. I should have brought them out with me, but I did not. But anyway, there's been a movie kicking around for about 15 years. And, and a lot of people say things like, oh, H.P. Uh, Lovecraft is unadaptable to TV because it's all about intangible, unknown fear. There's been a handful of good stuff that's been done. I know Nicolas Cage recently did uh, The Color of Space, which was a good one. So. So, uh, I think it's possible and in the right hands I definitely think it's possible and one of the more straightforward stories would be at the mountains of madness in fact it was so uh, widely you know, portrayed that it at one point had Tom Cruise attached to it so Guillermo de Toro wrote a script 15 years ago but now He's thinking about doing one with Netflix, a smaller, weirder version. I imagine you could actually do this in a short, like limited series, maybe, maybe anywhere from three to six episodes could make sense. Uh, it's part mystery, uh, part cosmic horror, as they tend to call the HP Lovecraft stuff. But let's get into it a little bit and and see what's going on here at Netflix. It's uh, Guillermo del Toro's Unmade Passion Project. And it's not quite dead yet. The King Cast podcast, which is about Stephen King, uh, he did an interview where they revealed that Mountains was one of the first projects he presented to Netflix when he signed a multi-year deal streamer uh, with the streamer 2020. If you didn't know, he did the Tales of Arcane, which are also seemingly inspired a little bit by H.P. Lovecraft, which has Troll Hunters and um, Five Below in that series, which I thought was really good. I really enjoy that. So when he started digging through the boxes and seeing what he had in his cupboard, he said he found Count of Monte Crisco remake and At the Mountains of Madness. Now, I don't really want to see a Count of Monte I love the one from back in the day. I think that's a fantastic one. Uh, but no one's really, I mean, I, I'm sure there's been like fan films of Mountains of Madness, but I don't think there's ever been like a decent production of it. It seems uh, that they were looking at Universal was going to do it as a 3D movie starring Tom Cruise produced by James Cameron, but his budgeting started to balloon up to 150 million with a R rating. So people weren't really going to do that. I don't even know that it needs an R rating, although to get the right atmosphere, maybe it would. It might have, because uh, a lot of gruesome things kind of happen in it but the best part of hp lovecraft is what's unseen what's strange and bizarre so he said when he was reflecting on what would happen like uh he says here there was a 150 million dollar budget tom cruise james cameron big big names big price budget uh industrial light and magic doing the effects there's art there's a concept there's even a script floating around which you can read if you'd like to see it and he, I don't know why he was so hard up on the R rating. They say uh, if it would have been PG-13, he didn't like the idea. So he goes on and he co-wrote the script 15 years ago. And he says he would need to do a rewrite. And today, in today's day and age, he thinks he can scale it down. Because he thinks he can uh, take back a lot of the big, big set pieces that were like, make it like a blockbuster movie. Which I think is really good. I would love to see like a more scaled down, really finely tuned, uh, strange tale of, of a recreation of, of what the book is about. Uh, the book is about a 
doomed Antarctic expedition that stumbles upon a far greater terror than anyone could imagine, right? That's pretty much every HP Lovecraft book, but I mean, they're all great. Some sort of unreconcilable horror that you can't imagine or fathom or something from beyond space and time, right? So he goes, like he could go much more weirder, much more smaller budget. And he said the one thing people complain about streamers, but he feels that he's been, that with streamers, you've been allowed to do more, that you get less studio interference. You get less people saying different things like, or, or less producers getting involved and he could really scale it back. So this article has been making its way around, especially with this interview. Uh, I'm glad to see it. I'm really excited. Are you an HP Lovecraft fan? Have you read the books? Do you recommend any? Do you think there's any that would make really good stories? There are some that I think would make some really cool uh, short story, like short series, maybe a, a full length movie. Hard to say, but I was really excited about this news that I wanted to share with you. Are you excited? Because I'm, I'm super excited to get a really good HP Lovecraft adaptation. It's uh, really tough to get one, especially with some of the baggage that people like to attribute to a man who was clearly not... Uh, it, look, you can't judge things that are out of time. Like, he comes from a different time and he was clearly disturbed and had some problems. He was... Uh, De definitely seems like he had undiagnosed things like agoraphobia and things like that. So it's it's hard to, for us to tell, but I still really, really enjoy the writings. In fact, uh, Mr. H Reviews did a, a video on this, which I will link up here so you can check out that too, because he did, I believe he was saying that he did some readings of the books, some like uh, audio books of them that you can check out. And I think they're very cheap or, or free even that you might be able to catch. So. If you're an HP Lovecraft, I highly recommend anything like that. I'm a big, anybody who wants to get into HP Lovecraft, you should. There's there's a lot of classics. I recommend reading them in the dark, late at night, scare your pants off. It's some good stuff. I'm telling you, you're going to enjoy it. Especially when you read it and you go back and you'll be like, oh my gosh, Stephen King did this already. But then you're going to realize, no, this guy wrote this like 100 years ago. And Stephen King just picked up on it later. So I, I always find a little bit of fun in that where you go back and find something that you're like, wow, this influenced like so much stuff. It's amazing. So anyway, thanks for listening. I really appreciate it. Uh, what I'd also really appreciate is a like and subscribe. If we've earned it today, we would really love for you to subscribe to get more news like this. You can also get my rants, reviews, uh, our full length podcast with the other members of our reviews will kill you as we do it for free on itunes it's not behind a paywall or anything you can catch the whole thing we also live stream at 7 30 p.m eastern standard time on fridays so be sure to check that out because i'm hoping to see you on the next one because i'm on to the next one <laughs>